One of the most amazing things you can do in Pneumatic Craft is drones. And what I'm going to show you is everything you need to know about using drones. Now, the first thing you're going to need is a programmer here and a charging station. Now, this programmer looks really, really complicated. And even when I was learning it, I thought, oh my goodness, this is a bit much. But actually, it's really, really, really simple when you know what you're doing. What I'm going to be writing here is a basic drone program that is going to work as a functioning mob farm for you. Now, these drone programs can do pretty much anything. They're actually really amazing. So the first things first is how do we make um, drones? What you'll see if I type in drone is that there are a few drones. The one we're going to be predominantly looking at is the one just called drone. And this is one that you can actually program to do whatever the hell you like. If you would like something simpler, there are options. And these are going to be the guard drone, the harvesting drone, the collector drone, and the logistics drone. If we look, for example, at the guard drone, it's an airborne robot which defends an area. When deployed on an inventory, it will import an item from that inventory, like a uh, weapon, so a sword, and attack any mobs which enter a 31 by 31 area centered on the inventory. So if I placed um, a chest here, and then you know shift right clicked the drone onto this inventory and put a sword in here, it would basically just guard in a 31 by 31 area around that chest. And that is all there is to it with things like a guard drone. How do you actually get the guard drone going? Well, you go to a charging station, which obviously is hooked up with pressure, put in your guard drone, and it's going to fill it up um, with pressure, and then it's ready to go. Something else we can do with our drones, both the basic one, like I'm showing you here, a guard drone, and also the programmable ones, which are much more interesting, is upgrades. And if I click the Manage Upgrades button in the charging station, you'll notice the button goes away. It only appears when the drone is in here. You can see there's a lot of um, upgrades we can put into our guard drone. There's nine slots for upgrades. I can put in a creative supply. So if you are testing your drones in creative, you could just add in this creative supply, um, which negates all air usage and ammunition if a minigun upgrade is installed. One thing to note um, with your drones, they will automatically come back to a charging station whenever they need to, to fill up on pressure. You don't need to worry about doing that manually. They will just come back. I think it's within an 80, 80 block radius. They will try and find um, a charging station with pressure. And once they're full, they'll go back to whatever they were doing. We have speed upgrades in here, um, which speeds up how fast the drone will fly around. A volume upgrade, meaning how much it can carry. An armor upgrade. These are really good. They, It says here, I think it's 15 upgrades is equivalent to a full suit of iron armor. But there is a very small speed penalty per armor upgrade. So if you want to put in multiple, um, you know, you could just stack them up in there, for example. But it has got a bit of a speed penalty. So you may want to put in some speed upgrades into your drone as well, for example. Minigun upgrade, it gives it a minigun, but you will have to put ammo in there. Gun ammo, it's called. Uh, very cool. A uh, standby one. When inserted, the drone will go into standby mode when idle, saving air. Ah, that's nice. Oh, yes. So basically, if you just leave them and they've got nothing to do, they will be hovering around still, taking up air pressure. With this upgrade, they won't, but full damage can happen. Having, I think, just one armor upgrade will negate that full damage, however. So as long as you've got a few little armor upgrades in there, you should be fine. They aren't very sturdy without armor upgrades. Zombies and that will kill them. When they are killed, they will drop as an item on the ground that can be re-picked up. Um, so a few things to note there. There's an item life upgrade, meaning that, you know, you've got a higher um, life on your drone, a security upgrade. It can operate within fluids. With two upgrades, fluids around the drone will be temporarily displaced away for, um, you know, around it. The drone will never willingly enter lava, regardless of security upgrades. One or more security upgrades will also provide it with protection from electrical damage, from uninsulated immersive engineering wiring, and things like that, which is really, really cool. Um, we also have a range upgrade, meaning, of course, it can go further, and a muffler upgrade to make it quieter. So those are the upgrades we could put into our drones. For the other basic drones, we have a collector drone, which will collect items within a local 
area centered on wherever you deploy it. So if I shift right click it here, it will then actually pick up items within this local area here. We've got the harvesting drone. Um, when placed on an inventory, it will pick up a hoe and replant any crops that have been harvested and it requires a hoe to function so it can get it from that chest, etc. The main thing I said we're going to be looking at is the programmable drone. So when you make your drone, you're going to get an empty one like this. Let's start off then. Let's say I've made a drone here and I want to program it to do a mob farm. I'm going to make another programmer. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically copy the program that I have made here. So what is this program saying? Well, we use these puzzle pieces on the right to make our program. And then we put it all together. And we can export it into the drone. And then using a chest ne nearby or your own inventory, it will actually take puzzle pieces to make it. So these are puzzle pieces here that you need in an adjacent inventory. Um, as you can see, you get eight with some plastic and a finished PCB. You can put them into an adjacent inventory and the program app will use those puzzle pieces when you actually export it to your drone. So every one starts with a start piece. But as you can see, there's lots more pieces. If I open this panel here, you can see there's a ton of pieces we can use, which all looks quite overwhelming. Now, it also says down here, difficulty. This is basically just if you're a beginner or not. You can say, only show me beginner puzzle pieces. So you can sort of make your own um, program with these. Medium will show you much more complex ones as well. And advanced will show you all of them. But you may find that overwhelming. So you could say, oh, I just want to see the, the easy ones, you know, beginner sort of pieces like this, which is all we're going to be using for this program today. But once you've learned this, I think you're going to really hit the ground running and be able to do whatever programs you want to do really, really easily. So we start off with a start piece and you just click and you can zoom in and zoom out depending on how big your program is. You can drag this around. So this is our start piece. You can see there's an error on here that there's no piece connected. Now, if you hover over this piece and press I or, oh, it's not working. Uh, it was working earlier. It should just bring up the um, manual page. But for some reason, that's not working. I don't know why. It was before I started filming this tutorial. So we've got our start. And the first thing we want to say is to equip a weapon. So what I'm going to go to is import from inventory. And I'm going to click that and drag it to, you can see it fits nicely here onto my start. Now, the way I want you to think of this is if you're finding it confusing, then just remember that whatever it can attach to can be used with that. So this piece will fit onto here. So this can be used like this. However, this piece, a fluid filter, like I can't just go start to a fluid filter. You can tell because it doesn't fit that that doesn't make any sense. I can just drag it and click it off the screen and it will fall off. So I'm going to put my import from inventory here. But how do I know what inventory to import from? Well, we have here a GPS tool. I'm going to go over to this chest over here and I'm going to shift right click the GPS tool onto the chest. And that has selected the um, coordinate as this chest. And in here, I will place a never write sword. I go back over to my programmer. I get my GPS tool. And I don't click on the invent import from inventory. I'm actually going to say area. And I'm going to click this on. And can you see it's got this little bit here? So I'm going to drag that onto here like that. And then I'm going to click the GPS tool and left click it onto the area. So what I have said is import from inventory. What inventory? Well, using the area card, I'm saying it's this inventory. So the first thing the drone is going to do in this program is it's going to import something from this inventory that I've selected. Now that we have imported from the inventory, in other words, we have our weapon. It's going to import the Neverite sword from that inventory. What I want you to now do is kill some mobs. So entity attack, and I'm going to drag that again onto here. And I'm going to drag another area card onto here, or puzzle piece as they're called. And for this one, I'm going to use an air, a GPS area tool. I'm going to take a piece of dirt for this one. And this is the area I want it to kill entities in. And I'm going to place one block here, one block here. I'm going to right click. Uh, yeah, right click 
sneak right click even in fact i've forgotten if you just press shift for info you can see here it says right click a block to change the first one and left click for a second so i'm going to right click this piece of dirt here and then i'm going to left click this piece of dirt so this is the area that i'm now going to be using and i can just break these uh oops come off your tool and break these blocks i'm going to go into my programmer take my gps area tool and left click it on that area so that is the box that i want the entity attack to attack in if i right click on this widget you can see it says box cylinder grid etc the entity attack one does only work on a box and i want it filled and if i actually am not sure where my areas are i can right click on that and say preview area and can you see it's now lit up the area so i'm like right okay that's where i'm going to be attacking i'm going to here right click unpreview area cool so we're going to pick up a weapon we're going to entity attack and then what I want it to do is actually pick up items that the entities drop and store them in a different chest or just any inventory in that area. So I'm going to say pick up items. So once you've killed the entities, I want you to pick up some items. I'm going to get an area or maybe I just want to use the same area as before. What I can do is just middle click on this area box here and just drag it down to here. And it's basically copied that puzzle piece. So in the exact same area that I've showed you, pick up any items, which obviously is the same area where I'm killing mobs. Therefore, they're dropping them in that same area and I can pick them up in that area. You could add an item filter. Um, I could put that onto here, you know, so I can filter only the mob drops because maybe there's certain items or maybe there's only certain items that the mobs drop. Like maybe I only want to pick up string from spiders and absolutely nothing else. And you can put an item filter and then I can right click and add the actual filter to the item here. Um, but I don't really want to add an item filter. I just want to get all mob drops for this tutorial. Then what I want to do once I've picked them up is I want to export them to an inventory. And I don't really want them to go into a specific inventory. I just want them to go into any inventory in that area. So again, I'm going to click and use the same one. What that means is that I've got this chest here which is obviously an inventory in that area. But if I had loads of chests, it would just fill them all up one by one. It wouldn't care. Or if you wanted them into a specific one, obviously I would say um, the area would be a specific, it would be specifically on that chest. So what this is saying is that it's going to pick up an inventory, which is its never right sword. It's then going to kill mobs in the selected area, pick up any items from mobs in, any, in the area, and it's going to export them to any inventories in that area. I'm then going to drag my drone into this top right slot and I'm going to say export program. It says that it requires zero puzzle pieces and the available puzzle pieces are 64. The available puzzle pieces are 64 because I've put them into a chest next to it. If I've doubled that stack, you can now see there's 128 available puzzle pieces. The reason it only needs zero is because I'm in creative and it won't use any in creative. So click the button. It has now exported that program into this drone and you could just export a new program onto it to overwrite it i'm then going to go into my charging station i'm going to put my drone in here to fill it up with pressure and i'm going to give it some armor upgrades i'm going to give it some speed upgrades as well um and that's pretty much it to be honest i don't really care about anything else i don't think for this one so i've given it some armor upgrades and some speed upgrades it's got pressure it's got a program in it Let's now see what it does. Now I can put this drone down anywhere. Let's just check. We've got another right sword in here. I can put it down here. And what you're going to see is it's going to start the program. So it's going to go, cool. I'm going to go over and I'm going to pick up my never right sword, which it has. You can actually see the sword um, was underneath it. And now it's just going to sit on top of the inventory. And because I didn't put an idle upgrade in, it's just going to be using its pressure sat here waiting. And then what I'm going to do is spawn some spiders. And as you can see, it is automatically killing the spiders in the area that I have designated. And here it goes. Obviously, the spiders can actually escape, so they're, they're not that great. Ah, and I've, you may be thinking, well, this is going really, really slowly. So what I've actually done wrong here, for example, and let's pretend that I've done this on purpose for the tutorial, Obviously, it's going to be putting items from its inventory into the chest. So you may actually want to whitelist the items that it's putting in here, because otherwise it's just going to dump its own weapon. And its own basic melee attack is obviously not very good. 
So that is one thing to make sure of there um, when you're doing that. You could use a mini gun upgrade and, am and gun ammo um, to make this even easier, of course. But that is how filters actually can come in really handy with these things. But as you can see, apart from that one little mistake I made, which is very easy, easily rectifiable with an item filter, is it has killed the items in this area. But if I place one out here, it's not going to touch them. In here, however, it will. And then it's put, a, it's put the spider's eye and the string into the chest as I have asked. And there we go. We've got a basic drone program that is now fully operational. And whenever it runs out of pressure, it will just come back to this charger, repressurize itself, and then go back to the area. And that's it. So although it does look quite overwhelming, you can see it's actually quite straightforward. Um, if we're going to advanced here, you know, there's so many items you could look at here. Fluid filters, coordinate operators, and... Oh, there we go. If you just middle click on them in here, it will take you straight to the page in the book. And I can just press back, um, like crafting. I could just go back and it tells you all about the crafting module. Um, jump. So you can see what we've got here. We've sort of got a, a text one. You can use this, for example, to filter um, on like an entity attack. So it doesn't attack you. It doesn't attack players. It only attacks certain mobs, things like that. The item filters. Um, the, the coordinate one, which is sim, sim, similar to the area one, you know, um, a dig area, harvest, place, right click, right click entity, void items, um, go to location, emit redstone, suicide where it just um, it aborts the program, wait, uh, edit sign, conditions. There's loads and loads and loads you can do with these um, programs, but Hopefully, based on the tutorial I've shown you, I've given you enough understanding to sort of make your own programs. You know, this is a great mob farm one that I, to start with, you might think is a bit overwhelming. But actually, when you look at it step by step like that, it's really, really clever, but actually quite easy to make. And that is how you use drones in Pneumatic Craft.